Uh, hey, Edith. Hey, Christy. What do you call a pickle doctor? I don't know. A dill pusher. What do you call the pickle that got run over on the highway? I, I, I don't know. Road dill. <laughs> Who is the pickle's favorite artist? D- 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 Salvador Dilly. Very good! Get out! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Hi, everybody. Whether you're in your car, doing your chores, watering your garden, or doing something illicit, hello. <laughs> oh, hi, Edith. Hi, Christy. Wow, it's fall now, isn't it? It's fall. We got into two seasons. We're a two-season podcast, Christy. Who would have thought, huh, when we started this in July? Not me. That's for sure. Yeah. It, yeah. It's sure reassuring, as terrible as things can get, that there can be some wonderful things. Yeah, well, you and me think this is wonderful anyway. <laughs> That's right. Two of us. <laughs> we have fun. But then so is everybody out there listening, so that's good. That's right. Or or they would have stopped listening okay. already. You know, I went for a hike this weekend at Garden of the Gods. Oh, down in I've Colorado been there. Springs. Love that place. Uh-huh. And my niece was coming through and she was there with her wife. And so we had this wonderful hike. And boy, the colors of the leaves were just beautiful out there. Yeah. They even are on my street. And my street, which is not too far away from your street. Three blocks away from your street. We're three street levels away. You know, a couple years ago, I planted a Rocky Mountain maple. I was very excited because it's supposed to be one of those trees that turns bright orange in the fall. Yeah. And I think we've had it maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years. No? No turning? It never happens. It just, they're just all sort of like turn sort of like a tan and then fall off a tan nobody wants a tan leaf <laughs> yeah, it's pretty disappointing <laughs> do you are you sure it's a rocky mountain do you think it might have been miss mark i don't think so because i got it at a very reputable nursery so reputable well geez christy you never know it might happen some year have patience christy that's right and no blame i'm not going to blame the tree oh no blame yeah, yeah you can't be <laughs> blaming trees somebody had a question from our seed podcast remember when we did seeds? yeah great question do you save seeds from a fruit or vegetable that is not completely ripe isn't that a good question yeah. well the answer is it is much better if you let the thing ripen in if not on vine then ripen in your kitchen or whatever because then you can guarantee viability mm-hmm. and can i say i think that's also true for flowers aha uh-huh. okay so uh, you have to wait till the flower gets dry the f- and the seeds get dry. The seeds start showing up before you start. Yeah, because it has to go through the full development. Let it go mm-hmm. through the whole, life, the whole life cycle, and then it'll be ready to start a new life. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, to the garden in the fall. My favorite, favorite time. I started my anaerobic leaf bags. What that is, Christy? Is I'm looking at Edith very puzzled right now. Her eyebrows went, like I went up and what? down. What? <laughs> <laughs> All it is is I rake a little bit and I stuff it in a bag, a bag with no holes in it, pour some water in it, and then try to pump all the oxygen and air out of uh-huh. it. And then I leave it for six months to a year. And it turns into this unbelievable... Ah, uh, just this black gold, this beautiful. You know what it sounds like to me? What? It sounds like the wonderful gunk you take out of one's gutters. <gasps> That's exactly, exactly what it is. My That's dear exactly husband, right. when he goes up to clear out the gutters, he has a bucket with him and bless his heart, he yes. saves all of that because I asked him to because I said it's really good for the garden. That's exactly. And isn't it gorgeous? It's almost like soil. Yeah. I do the same thing when I clear the gutters. One time, in fact, I was throwing him down. Gretchen, my daughter, was holding the bucket. I missed the bucket, went on her head. Oh, how we laughed. No, no. <laughs> that was just me laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you that's one of those things that makes a great splat. It, oh, it was great. <laughs> but 
But that's so I started that, you know, because um, I don't like to leave jobs until they get too big to do. So I start mm. things a little at a time. So I started which is, that Which project. is good, just as a note, because later on we're talking about fall cleanup. That's and that's right. really, that's a great point to bring and up. And I don't want to take all the leaves anyway. So I take mm-hmm. the leaves early and we will get into the rest of that later. Uh, I took out a cucumber plant that had had it. Oh. It had had it, you know. It yeah. was just all dry and sad looking. It wanted to go. Uh, you, you know, Please every, I go, eat it. Please let me go. Give me some peace. Release me. <laughs> let me free. <laughs> I heard it. Every day. I go out into the garden every single day. And I, I have posted two of my giant zucchini. And I swore I wouldn't let it happen again. What did I find today? Oh, no. I did. How today, big? It was, I'm oh, holding my, my arms apart. What is this? Two, two feet? Two, it, 18 inches? That looks uh, more than two feet. Yeah. It that's was big. gigantic. It was, you, know, you, you know what I figured out? I think that zucchini is the KGB of vegetables. Yeah. They hide. Yeah. They hide. And then they jump out at you and they interfere with our elections. <laughs> what they do. The evil giant zucchini. The evil giant zucchini. So, um, so you need to make some bread. I do. I'm going to grate it. I've already grated some and frozen it, and I'm going to make some bread. And the final thing I did, I started my bokashi experiment. Oh, with the bucket? With the bucket. So this is the compost? Compost in a bucket. I feel Inside like the, the house? Mm-hmm. Well, it's right outside my back door. Okay. I, you could do it in the house if you mm-hmm. wanted. But uh, it is, um, I, I felt like a bucket chemist, I swear, because... You, you know, you put some of the compost, then you put the spent beer grains, which is actually bokashi is the okay. Japanese word for And that. these you got from your daughter Gretchen. Got from my Gretchen. Oh, I got to give a shout out to Courtney from the Lariat Lodge who gave me the, the uh, spent beer grains. Cool. It's a brewery. So I'm going to keep you up to date with that. I just started that on Monday. That sounds like the great, like you're having a little chart. It's really you might ex- need to have a little. Yeah. It's really exciting. A little science experiment. Do you know what I put in there? I put in there a chicken bre- bone in chicken breast. Ooh, because you're supposed to be able to. And this way, I thought I'll see if it works. Was it a cooked chicken breast? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that that was my week in the garden. What about yours? Well, um, a really beautiful and good friend of mine gave me some peonies. <laughs> I was just going to say something smart ass about your smart beautiful friend and then I realized, oh, I gave her. <laughs> yes. I gave her. And I did a little research on how to so I planted them you and did? I did a little bit of research to see what's the best way to do it. Yeah. And they say of course September October is a great time to do it. Of course, it depends on where you live in the country. Mhm. Look for a place that has south or east facing sun that gets about six hours mm-hmm. of sun. And so I just went, you know, what the heck? I dug some holes and I planted them and we'll see what happens in the spring. Well, I, That's I, my I can't science wait. experiment. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, good, I, good. I gave them some room. So I, they're in a section that had a lot of plants that I just was bored with and didn't like anymore. I weren't doing well, so... Um, I also had another good-looking and beautiful friend named Melanie, uh-huh. who early on this summer gave me a lilac bush, an extra lilac bush that she had uh-huh. in a little, you know, in a, like a two-gallon pot. And she had been watering and taking care of it for a couple of years and just not getting in the ground. Left it in the pot? Yeah. yeah. Taking care of it. And it looked great. And she says, Christy, I don't know. You just go ahead and take it, you know. So I took it. And of course, then I promptly just watered it all summer long. I didn't do anything with it. But then I dug a big hole. And isn't sometimes a, a hole digging can be so satisfying? Yes. Like when you're a little kid, all you wanted to do was like dig a hole, or when you're on the beach, you just want to dig a hole. You, I, you know, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so I dug and, and, and some more big holes, put that lilac in. So we'll see how that does. The tomato seeds that I uh, was using the experiment with last week that I had in a jar, uh-huh. I strained them and I put them on a paper towel. I'm showing these to you here right now. So you see how they're all kind of stuck to this paper towel? Uh-huh. So, but I can just brush them off. Yep. And, and then I can... Brush them off, yeah. And then put them in a little jar or something uh-huh. like that. Yeah. And because they're tomato plants, I mean, 
the the seeds that's the one I would put the deoxidizer in those I, packets I would, that we got last week yeah I would put them in I put them in my tomatoes okay I guess the last thing I want to say was I'm just so truly surprised how my garden looks so amazing after we had snow in the first yeah. week of September and now we're in a severe drought well I'm still watering yeah not as much, but I'm still watering. And things that I thought weren't going to make it. Remember I said, well, the cosmos didn't make it. Yeah. They survived. Not all of them, but I'm having, but I get, did a, a trim back and here it is a month later and the cosmos are still See, blooming. And they survived the Japanese beetles. They the, survived everything. The zinnias are blooming. The marigolds are blooming. Morning glories. I mean, I just have so many flowers that are still blooming. And the garden, of course, is still producing it, it's it's amazing to me how we just had snow a month ago, and yeah. of course, yeah, it's been in the eighties. Yeah, and it does. And it looks like we're gonna, for the unforeseeable future, have good weather. Yeah, it does. Nobody's saying anything about a frost. No, no, and it might even rain. So that would be great. Yeah, the gardens are the gardens are surprising. They, they are keep surprising us on our toes and huh? keep us hopeful. Actually, very hopeful. Oh yes. And uh, don't forget, folks, if you want to see pictures of our gardens, you can check them out on Facebook, Pinterest, or Instagram. And if we ever use any terms that you're not familiar with, just check out our website and look for our Upside Down Dictionary. We also have kind of a big ask of you, which is we have a Halloween show coming up. And if you want to be part of it, please send us stories like I don't know. What kind of stories, Christy? Uh, costume I, fails. Oh, costume um, fails are good. I'd love to hear like pumpkin stories, like your attempts at growing pumpkins, your joys, your successes, your fails with pumpkins. Sure. Pumpkin stories. <laughs> what you cook with them. Sure. Yeah. You don't think people are going to have good pumpkin stories? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe pumpkins surprises. are not alive, really, per se. They don't move much, so I don't know, <laughs> Okay, if you have any scary stories, that'd be good too. Scary's good, yeah. Yeah. Hey, do you think we should, when we record the Halloween episode, do you think we should, um, we should dress up in costume? No. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Love squashing your dreams. If you want to, we can. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. <laughs> okay. I think we should. I think we should have a costume. Hello, Christy here. Edith and I are in McCool Junction, Nebraska at Phoebe's Farm Fashions Runway Show. This is one of my favorite events of the year as it answers the question, what will farmers and gardeners be wearing next year? It's starting. The first model is walking down the ramp. It looks like she's wearing a large, shapeless onesie. No seams. That is so avant-garde. This is a one-size-fits-all, and it will fit everyone from Tinkerbell to Yoda. I love it! Rather than old-fashioned overalls, whose straps and buckles can chafe after a few hours of hard physical labor, this is comfort first for the person who doesn't give a flying fig about what other people think. Oh! Look how it floats around the body when the model does the turn. She looks like a hot air balloon. Beautiful. Here comes the second model with accessories. Look at that sun hat. Is that lace netting over the face? It's mosquito netting. Fashion forward and protective genius. An homage to Versace, maybe? And the gardening gloves. Even the smallest hands look like man hands in those. And the claws at the ends of the fingers for garden work? Billie Eilish nails. High fashion and utilitarian. Oh, this is the creme de la creme. I've never seen anything like this. Am I seeing 30 pockets in those gardening pants? Yes! Echoes of Givenchy 2005. It's like wearing a fisherman's vest on each leg. Not just pockets. There are loops where you can fasten your rakes and shovels, which she has done. It turns the gardener into a walking tool shed. Uh, oh, it looks like the model has fainted under the weight of the tools she's dragging. Well, it serves her right for weighing less than a hoe and a shovel. Christy, you don't mean that? Yes, Edith, I really do. We'll take a break now until they start the show again. We're rolling. <laughs> I love how you say, you want to start... You start. No, you start. So I'm all ready to start, and, and then, then you started. I said, we're rolling. <laughs> we're rolling. <laughs> I 
like to mess with you. That's good. You know what? I keep you keep me on my toes. Well, you start right now. Go ahead. You okay. start. Ready? Go. And we're back. And we're back. we're, we're going to talk about fall cleanup. What the heck is that? Of the garden. Let's be specific. Not just like look of your house. Of the garden, right? Of your fall cleanup of the garden. Oh, cleanup of the garden. Okay. Yeah, not your car. No. Not your love life. No, no. Or your life in general, which could be a terrible mess at this point. But hang on. This will be over at some point. <laughs> right? <laughs> We're going to keep things simple. Keep it simple. We're talking about the garden. The garden. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Why do a fall cleanup? Well, um, I never used to do one, and I suppose in theory you don't have to do a fall cleanup. Wait a minute! But aren't you supposed to do your once a year turn of the compost pile in the fall? <laughs> Usually, I do my once a year turn of the compost in the spring. Okay, but when I first started gardening, I never did it, and then I learned that if you do a little bit of cleanup, mm-hmm. um, you, you're actually giving your soil more nutrients. You can uh, prevent weeds and undesired little plants from taking over your landscape. And you can have mold and mildew can damage your property, your garden, your fencing, your decks. So it's not necessary to hack everything down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about. But that doesn't mean do nothing. Exactly. So there's there's some certain little tips that we will share with you about how to do the clean up the right way and I guess just to get us going I would say you want to tidy up but not too much okay tidy up but not too much okay because you don't want to hurt the beneficial insect insects and the pollinators that overwinter in fallen leaves and around your plants you know what I have about that little topic right there Uh uh-huh I have written down here for myself Get seeds of flowers and veggies that you want to plant next year. You can Mm -hmm. save those or you can spread them, uh, you know, so they'll grow themselves like I did for the, with the parsley today, or you can leave them on the stalk for the birds. Yes. You don't have to hack everything down. I think a great plant to leave some for the birds is echinacea. Yeah. Purple cone flower. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can take some of them down, but leave some for the birds. They're kind of beautiful when they're brown and, and bleak. They're like they're like Dixonian, you yeah. know, like bleak house. Yeah. Bleak garden. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's also good to leave some flowers to go to seed because then you can collect them. Mm-hmm. So I was doing that today. I was collecting seeds from those beautiful asters that grew this year. And you, or you can let them self sow. You know, another good plant to spread pop to spread seeds on are poppies. Christy, can I just interject? Yeah, I my first poppy that I have ever grown ever from seed. This one was from seed, uh-huh. but I couldn't even keep anything alive. It bloomed today. Hey, wow, I might that even, is late. I might even put it on our Facebook page. What it's, kind of poppy is it? I don't know. Is it a? Is it little? What color is it? It's this un- unbelievably pinky peach color. Wow. It's I got it the seeds from a neighbor's front yard. Uh-huh. I asked permission. Of course I did. Didn't I? Yes. Yes, I did. And <laughs> it, maybe I'll post it tomorrow. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. It made, it made my whole day. Uh, uh, poppies are a lovely thing. And for a poppy to bloom this late. Yeah. That and another so one is coming too. But And I grew it from seed. So... Anyway, I That's was great. really proud of myself. Well, for and doing then that. when those, when those, uh, when if you may still have time for it to go to seed, hard to tell how long our fall is going to be. But then you can spread but more. But the seed. plant's not going to die, right? No, the plant. The won't. plant is a perennial. Yeah, right. Exactly. The plant will come back. But so, if you wanted more, if you wanted to get more seeds out of it. Um, so if if it uh, comes, if I don't this year, it will next year. I, I have mm-hmm. learned somewhat, learned a little bit about patience, you know. <laughs> Speaking of seeds, the other thing I always do at this time of year mm-hmm. is make a really thorough check of weeds because they are rushing to go to seed. Yeah. The one thing you don't want is to let a weed go to seed. Uh, I feel like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> because, you know, it. you'll never get rid of them. Because they can have thousands, millions. Yes, millions. Of seeds. So even if you don't have time, even if you just cut off those flowers and throw them in the garbage, do not let them go to seed and then pop those seeds all over your garden. That's part of my fall cleanup. Yeah. I also will, if I have things in containers, 
Yeah. Um, I will think about when do I want to move them inside or clean them out. Um, uh -huh. If you have, unless they're winter proof, they could crack over the winter as the soil expands and contracts. So uh -huh. if you want to save your containers. Um, and there are certain flowers that I actually bring inside and over winter. For example, geraniums. I, for years, I would just buy geraniums, and when it was done, I would throw them away. And then uh, somebody told me, you know, you can save them mm -hmm. and overwinter them. I, sometimes I do it in my attic. Sometimes I do it in my garage. But after the first hard frost, mm -hmm. I will nip them back about two-thirds, and then maybe I'll water them once a month. I do the same exact thing, and I don't put them in the direct sun. They, it's like they're on vacation. Give them a vacation. <laughs> That's right. Right? Look, like a bear hibernating. Yeah. Exactly. They're hibernating. And then next year, you don't have to buy geraniums. You've got these wonderful geraniums ready to go. And in the meantime, they're in your house, purifying the air in your house. It's a win-win. I did it last year with mums. Did you? So you, you brought that, your mums So in. that mum I gave you this year? Yeah. That was from mums that I bought last year. That I put in, I cut back, I put in the garage, watered them once a month, maybe, maybe a little bit more as spring was happening. Mm -hmm. And then I constantly was shearing them back as they were growing. And that was one of those mums that I gave you. Wow. And this mum is short for chrysanthemum, right? Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. like a mispronunciation of the word mime. <laughs> I'm gonna right. bring my mime, and in it was a girl. And these were grocery store moms. You know, when you're no go, we go to the grocery store, they always have those piles yeah. and piles of moms, yeah. and yeah. So it's a great thing. And I was also, I'm also, I have a question to ask you about bringing containers in. Yeah, I have a jasmine plant. So a, somebody, I traded somebody, and they gave me jasmine seeds. So I, you grew this from seed? Yeah, I sowed them. And um, they're in a pot on my with all my other containers. And maybe the plants right now are maybe like four or five inches. But there's okay. maybe like, I don't know, like eight or so seeds that germinated. Wow. But, I, but that's a zone six plant. And we're zone 5B in the Denver metro area. So I'm going to have to bring it in. Mm -hmm. But I'm scared because I've done that before with rosemary. And I they die. Oh, ro oh you know what? I bring my rosemary in every single year, and it's doing good and doing good. And then right about right around March, it like heads for the portal. Mm -hmm. Can you tell? I just finished watching The Good Place. <laughs> it heads for the portal. <laughs> oh, don't tell me because I still have three episodes left. Hey, I I'm not saying that's okay. all I'm saying. All right, <laughs> the rosemary. <laughs> Side note: Good Place is a really good TV show. Oh, it's, oh my gosh! Wow, that's all I'm saying. That's it. Well, just, you know, in addition to, uh, so I'll let you know, I'm going to have to eventually bring my jazz and plant in, yeah. and that'll be that experiment for uh -huh. the winter to see if I can keep it alive. I'll bring my rosemary in too. My rosemary, I bought, I've killed a lot of rosemary inside the house. Mm -hmm, me too. This year, I, I bought two. I planted them outside. They're doing great. And I'm going to see what happens if I leave them outside. Really? Okay. I think I got them in a place that's well protected. Mm -hmm. And if you have other sensitive plants, part of your fall cleanup, and this could be a very sensitive, ro it could be roses depending upon where you live or a certain kind of shrub that you want to protect it, mm -hmm. mulch it very high up. Mm -hmm. oh, first of all, trim it back and then mulch it. And you can even cover it with a blanket or some plastic or put a bucket on it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it outside, and I'm so you bring yours inside. I'll, I'll leave mine, mine outside. Out. Okay. I'll meet you in March, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Can I say something about the mulching? Mm -hmm. I wait until the ground is frozen before I mulch, because if I if you mulch early, especially a mm. lot, then bugs we don't yeah. really want can hide under there and live, and it can get moldy too, and it can get moldy. So. Uh, that sounds like a really good plan. So once the ground freezes, mulch the stuff that you leave outside. Always, yeah. Hey, everybody. Hello. This is Mulch. How you doing? I, Mulch, solve a host of problems in the garden. I loosen your soil. Keep the moisture in and keep the soil cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. What could be better? The fact that it don't cost very much? 
That's good. The fact that one of your neighbors might have a pile of mulch after getting their tree trimmed and can give you some for free? It doesn't get any better than that. In fact, I can do a lot of good almost anywhere. Almost. What the? What, what's this in the aisle? It's getting all over my dress. What is this? I mulched it. You mulched the aisle of the church? Well, you're a dang fool. Thank goodness I found out now. I almost made a terrible mistake. Yeah, don't be a dang fool. Use me. Save water. Save your garden. I'm mulch. I'm at your service. Go ahead. Use me. What else do you do for fall cleanup? I take out unproductive plants. I take them out as soon as I can because I figure they are taking nutrients out of the soil. Especially in the vegetable garden, right? Especially in the vegetable, uh, yeah. So I take them out and uh, Christy, Christy, that's actually, that's actually about all I do. I don't fertilize in the fall because you don't want to Agreed. make the, them think they should grow. They right. shouldn't. Um, I do turn my compost. What am I going to do? do? Can I ask you this about your vegetable garden? Yeah. Because um, usually what I do is I just take everything out, except uh -huh. for I have like a, some sort of perennial parsley patch that keeps coming back. Do you ever plant a, a, um, a cover crop? Oh, gosh, I'm so glad you brought that up. I do not. And a lot of people, I mean, I've heard that it's a really good idea, like clover or... Well, legumes wouldn't work here. It's too cold. It, the beans, peas would never come up. But no, I do you? I never have either. Some people do clover or they even do like rye or barley or Vetch. some kind of grass. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason that I don't is if you mulch, you are uh, protecting against erosion along with everything else wonderful that you're doing. If you, to me, if you plant a cover crop, it is once again taking nutrients out of the soil Nature doesn't grow in the winter time, and I really, really try to copy what nature does. I, I try to give my garden mm -hmm. a total rest. Doesn't I've I've read though that a cover crop can also provoke, put nutrients into the ground once you dig it in. Yes, you have to dig it in. Yeah, well, that sounds a lot of work. Not only a lot of work, but I'm doing that with the compost. Oh, That's gotcha. exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, maybe sometime, maybe someday I'll do a cover crop, but um. But I'm not really moved, motivated in any way to do that right now. Uh, I know you don't have ornamental grasses. I do not. Oh, no. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> Rumor has it. But for folks out there who do have ornamental grasses, I'll tell you this, that I leave mine up. I think they're beautiful in the winter. Um, I, so I, I like agree. To leave them up. They, are I, they are beautiful. And I cut mine back to three or four inches, maybe uh, Feb late February, early March. And I have to wonder, Christy, with those beautiful, with all that vegetation, which it is beautiful. Yours are beautiful. Like, is that a place that bees can go? Or I would think so. I I've seen ladybugs so in there. So th it's actually you're creating a little home for things. Yeah. I'm going to change my mind. Here I am doing a pivot, 180, whoop, <laughs> about the ornamental grasses. Well, when you want some, let me know because I oh. can divide a lot for you. <laughs> okay. I got angel hair. I got Carl Forrester. I got... Uh, the the blue, the blue stuff, <laughs> the blue <laughs> stuff, stuff, the yeah. blue stuff. Yeah. Okay, um, I can say a few things about a lawn. What you do for your lawn? I know you don't have a lawn. I don't you have also a lawn. don't have a lawn. Um, but a lawn is what well, you do want to fertilize your lawn. You don't want to fertilize oh, really? your plants, but you do want to give your lawn um, some sort of high phosphorus content. Usually, it'll just say great for fall. Yeah. Um, you don't want to let fallen leaves stay unattended on your lawn because it can suffocate your grass. It can create mold. So you want to rake them up, shred them, put them in the compost bin. Oh, for goodness sakes, don't discard your fallen leaves. Never. Don't ever. They contain yeah. so many nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, you can leave them on the ground. Mm -hmm. You can compost with them. You can yeah. make my 
the bag of anaerobic leaf mold. That's what it's called, leaf mold. Okay. Yeah, forgot about that. The yeah. one thing I would say is don't let them get all packed up no. on your in your garden. So like a tidy up a little bit, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. don't go crazy. Not so heavy. Don't leave them to the extent where they mat down. Like yeah, matted. that's exactly that's exactly right. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, when you have trees, it's okay to do a light fall pruning. Oh, I've started. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. I started pruning my peach tree. Mm-hmm. So you can trim dead or diseased branches from trees or shrubs, especially if it's fruit bearing, because you don't want to do that in the spring. Right, not when the sap is starting to mm-hmm. move. You want to do it now. You could spread disease. You know what? Speaking of uh, fruit trees, now my, I didn't have any fruit this year, but when I do, for example, I noticed last year I had this incredible peach crop, and the peaches when they're ripe they'll just fall down. You know, before you know it, there's peaches. That's what it, it's really cool. But I noticed that um, bees and stuff love. I just left some of them on the ground. Yeah, for the, for the sure. for the insects, and then. They will rot away, and they will serve as, you know, as nutrients going right back in, just like nature would do it, right? That's yeah. what happens. I love that. Maybe next year. I'm really looking forward to next year. I'm, I'm feeling that we're going to get a real bumper crop of yeah. uh, plums and peaches and That's apples. That's kind of nice about the fall is because we have this great bounty that the garden gave us and we're you know slowly saying goodbye mm-hmm. and sort of like sending a kid off to college or something but just knowing that spring comes the earth is contracting right now mm-hmm. and in the spring it's a big in you know inhale of yes. air and uh, and you're not in debt to tuition it's the best <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> it just gives to you it gives to you all the time uh, well, I would I would say don't forget to keep watering. Right, 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 right. Keep watering. Like it's not as trees. much as in the heat of the summer, right? But the trees, for example. Exactly the trees, yeah. So describe how the watering for the trees goes. Sometimes I just take a hose and just uh-huh. set it up there for half an hour. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any fancy holes in my, yeah. any of that stuff. Deep drip, drip systems, I don't have that. But I'll do that, yeah. Um, I also have on my list... It's important to drain your hoses out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So make sure that the water is drained from your irrigation systems, your hoses, or any watering equipment that can be damaged from freezes. I have left uh, my sprinklers out before to frost, and then they break, and they Mm. can't take it. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any any water left over will in the winter will damage your equipment. So that's Mm -hmm. good good to think about when do you want to start doing that. And it's also a great time to start cleaning your garden tools. Ah, if you're a stickler, you could do that. Every yes, time I do it in the could. fall, I'm so happy because then when you start in the spring, it's all clean and ready to go. Yeah, that's good. Make sure you give everything a good wash. Uh, it's. I was thinking this year, I my shovels are getting dull. And I think, oh, it's a great time of year when you're done with your shovels to bring them in. There are certain places, garden centers will have shovel sharpening what? abilities. Yeah. I didn't know that. And they'll sharpen your spades. Sometimes you need a good spade sharpening. That Edith. is, oh my gosh, Christy, I have never known that. Have you done that? Yeah. Wow. You want to you wanna get your spade sharpened with me? Yes, <laughs> and my shovels and everything. <laughs> You're right, they do get dull. Well, I guess to wrap up, you should tidy up your yard a little bit in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so that in the spring you can start all anew. <laughs> It's everybody's favorite time, or at least it's Edith's favorite time. Uh Uh-oh, is it mailbag time? It's mailbag time, Edith. Ring, 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 ring. All right, now before I read this letter, I have a surprise letter for you. You have a surprise letter for me? Yes. Okay. So you remember last week I read that letter from Christy from Lakewood? Yes. was talking about her garden and how she grew all these wonderful vegetables, but she didn't grow tomatoes and she felt bad. Yes, 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 yes. Well, she wrote us back. She did. She did. We have a correspondence. Yes. We have a correspondence. This is so cool. Well, do you remember because she said, I'm going to tell Christy this me? She didn't mention my name and I felt left out. Yes. Yes, I do remember. (laughs) Did she really write back? Did she mention my name? Yes. Do you want to hear what she says? Yes. Okay. First of all, she says, hi, Christy. Wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. 
No, she says, hi, Christine Edith. I'm oh. just kidding. Oh, you were kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's good. She <laughs> said, um, I heard uh, my letter read this morning while I was commuting. Edith, I was talking to you as well. Ha ha. <laughs> and then she also gives us an update on her garden saying, sadly, the cantaloupe were picked off by squirrels or something. Oh. We'll have to start them off inside next time. Wow. And she says, I'm definitely sharing your podcast and will continue. Christy from Lakewood. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah, I thought you'd That's, enjoy that. Thank you. I do enjoy that. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, and next we have a letter from Laura from Albuquerque. Laura says, hi, Edith. Hi, Christy. I, I, she said my name first. She did. <laughs> do, you, do you feel good now, Edith? Yeah, I feel okay, very good. good. Thank you. Um, I've been wanting to write to you to tell you how much I love your podcast. I'm finally doing it. In some ways, gardening in Albuquerque feels similar to Denver as far as weather extremes and heat and hail go. Oh, right, 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 right. But for some reason, we, are, we weren't anticipating the level of garden pests that exists here. The garden pests? Yeah. Really? Okay. We learned the hard way about squash bugs and that apparently if you plant your squash after July 4th, you're usually safe from them. Well, that's so interesting. After July 4th. Wow. It seems so hot for that. But she learned it. Aphids and flea beetles are a challenge. An interesting fact we learned about cabbage white caterpillars this summer after giving one a home to see if it would turn into a butterfly. There are flies that can lay their eggs inside the caterpillars. When the caterpillar tries to molt, instead of a bigger caterpillar emerging, Three giant flies hatch out. It was like a horror movie inside a tiny container. Oh, my god! Fortunately, we had a backup caterpillar on our kale plant. And Can't we give more beautiful... time to the poor thing that was erupted out of? Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, it was just finishing your point. Yeah, okay, good. Good, good. So first was the caterpillar that had the alien explosion. yes. And then, fortunately, she had a backup caterpillar. A backup caterpillar. Who doesn't on, want a backup caterpillar? You need to have one. Yeah, Because you just you never do. know when never one know. is going to burst open <laughs> with giant flies hatching out. So she says they had that on her their kale plant, and that made it to a beautiful butterfly status. Oh, man, that is wonderful. She goes on to say, but and this is the thing, the part that you're going to find very interesting, Edith is that one garden pest we didn't know could have that title was roly-polies, a.k.a. pill bugs. You mean it's a pest for her? It is, in Albuquerque. Wow. She says, I always loved roly-polies, and I call them pill bugs. We had an infestation this year in the garden, and you literally couldn't make a single hole for a seed without coming into contact with lots of them. There were thousands of them. They were everywhere. Oh, my. Wow. And contrary to what some websites said, when we first started looking to see if there would be a problem, they will eat your plants. I didn't believe it until we went out one night with a flashlight and saw our poor plants covered in them. They love soft leaves of any seedling. We went through two rounds of attempted green beans before we figured out what was happening. Lettuce, chard, any baby plant... It's been a year of shredded plants and happy pill bugs here in Albuquerque. When they eat the leaves off the seedling, they leave the little leafless shoot standing on its own. But then they were even eating through the shoot and it would tip over like a tiny tree falling. Oh my. We tried beer traps and caught more cockroaches than pill bugs. We tried potato traps which were great when they stayed in our garden, but then we learned the hard way that two squirrels living nearby can, in a short amount of time, happily steal the countless potatoes I took ages to lovingly cut in half and carve out one by one, even when we tried spiking them to the ground. She's really dedicated. She went through a lot this summer. Yeah. And then she says, All that said, we learned a lot this year from figuring out it as we go and learning more patience with ourselves. We, I love this part. We have celebrated every bee and ladybug and spider who found our garden and spent time there. We've had a lot of dead plants this year, but have managed to grow wonderful tomatoes and basil, a happy kale plant, and our first cabbage. It's so beautiful. Your podcast was helpful information that I so appreciate and also keeps me excited about the garden. So glad your garden survived the crazy cold. Keep up the great work. 
Love Laura from Albuquerque. Oh, that is such a nice letter. It, it makes you wonder, you know, so Albuquerque is eight hours south of here. You know, you can get there in eight hours going 60 miles an hour. Well, they're much warmer than we are. I'm wondering, mm. do the pill bugs overwinter more than they do here? Right. Because uh, that's just really something. They're really not a problem here in my garden anyway. Have you ever heard of potato traps? No. Mm-mm. I looked it up, and it's an amazing little little hack. You take a potato, yeah. you cut it in half, and then you scoop out most of the inside, almost like if it's if you ever done like a twice baked potato. So, but this is a raw potato, a raw right? potato, uh-huh. and then you put it upside down, skin side up, yeah, in your yard, yeah. and then you wait. And then what happens is that the roly polies or the pill bugs will gather under there for some reason. They're having a picnic. And then you've <laughs> trapped them, and you lift it up, and then you take a shovel, and you scoop out, and you okay. get rid of the ball. So they're underneath the potato, yeah. and they're hanging on to the potato. They're eating it? That's how they I don't know it. if they're eating it That's or they're just hanging out. fascinating. Just hanging out. Huh? Yeah. A potato trap. I wonder what other bugs it works for. That is so interesting. But you can't let the squirrels take it. Right, because it's just... like a beach umbrella for the little insects. Yeah, like a you're beach like umbrella. fighting on all fronts, Shade. I guess. Wow. The roly-polies, the... Squirrels, the squash bugs, wow. the aliens but erupting look, look from at the good caterpillars. She, <laughs> they watched a caterpillar get born. Yeah. That is really something. And yeah. any gardener that has kids, you're doing such wonderful things. When you w- take the kid yeah. out at kid, child, I mean child, and, you know, <laughs> to watch life grow and stuff in, in your garden, in the backyard. Kids love gardening. They do love gardening. Yeah, I yeah. loved this letter so much. I just thought it was so great for her to really tell us what was happening. And and very interesting as well. Now, I learned something for sure. Yeah. The pill bugs are not always, I thought they were my friend. <laughs> well, I think it's true that, you know, bugs can be your friend in small doses. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a very good point. Because earwigs can be that way too. That's right. And when there's too many of them, they're going to eat your stuff because there's yeah. not enough food out there. That's good. That's a good thing to know. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Please send us your favorite gardening stories, successes, flops, stuff you make up, episode ideas. Your really thrilling pumpkin stories. All of those things. Be our correspondent. Yeah. Your your garden questions. Uh, We we don't know if we can answer them, but we'll sure give a college try. We will. And if we're wrong, we'll fess up later. (laughs) We do love hearing from you. Seriously. You can write to us at UpsideDownTulips at gmail.com or at our website, at UpsideDownTulips.com. And now it's time for your Garden Inspiration of the Week. This comes from the Internet. Some people want a big house, designer clothes, and a fancy car. Others create a garden where they can escape those people. One, huh? That's very good. That's a good one. <laughs> hey, everybody, that's it. That's it. We did it again. Christy. Thanks for listening. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. And if you have someone in your life that you think would like this podcast, please do them and us a favor and let them know about it. Even if they don't want to listen, you make them listen. They will sit down and they will listen. Yeah. So we have to th- also have a very special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song, which I just love. If you would like to hear more of Denise's music, you go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our fabulous website. And thank you to our friends and talented actors, Matthew Schneck and Michael Shaloub. Yay! Thanks, Matthew and Michael. Now, don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Always. Yay, yay.